The temporary bright spot for the global economy, observed in much of 2024, is now fading. And while further rate cuts from central banks on both sides of the Atlantic will help ease the risk of a full-blown recession, hopes for a so-called soft landing are likely to be disappointed due to several headwinds that are set to keep the global economy in a prolonged period of lackluster growth and one with little room for policy error. The first of these headwinds is political and geopolitical uncertainty. This is weighing on both business and consumer sentiment, causing delays to investment and also to spending decisions. Uncertainty is also weighing on some of the financial market risk premia, and just zooming in on France, we have seen that the long bond yield spread over Germany has widened by about 20 basis points since the election. We estimate that if this were to become permanent, it would, all else being equal, take 0.05 percentage points off GDP growth in France each year. This may sound moderate, but add on other transmission channels of uncertainty, and the numbers can very quickly add up to something sizable. Capacity of households to spend is also an issue in several economies, and not least in the US. The unusual savings buffers created by the pandemic have now been either spent or inflated away, and real wage levels have yet to catch up with past inflation. Reduced fiscal room, as governments seek to rebuild buffers to be able to address eventual future crises, means that fiscal policy, in many instances, is becoming a headwind, or at least much less supportive. Turning finally to China, the ongoing process of reducing reliance on the real estate sector as a driver of growth brings further challenges, as evidenced by the latest batch of disappointing economic data, leaving the official 5% growth target increasingly out of reach. The predicted increase in the frequency of extreme weather events has become ever more visible, with both a high human and high economic cost. The subsequent need to repair the damages of extreme weather and make adaptations here too, in the form, for example, of flood protection, risks taking away financial resources from the urgently needed climate transition. We furthermore observe that climatic factors are also increasingly weighing on housing, be it in relation to upgrading homes to become more energy efficient or to become more resilient to climate change itself. Easier monetary conditions on both sides of the Atlantic should certainly bring some relief, including to housing markets. But it's worth recalling that bringing monetary policy from the current tight stance back to neutral will take a sharper pace of rate cuts than presently discounted by financial markets over the coming quarters. It's moreover worth recalling that not all central banks are in easing mode. For example, in the case of the Bank of Japan, there we see signals of further tightening to come. The real upside potential for the global economy at this juncture will, however, come from creating opportunity for greater investment and innovation. Here, support from other policy areas is required, and in this respect, the new report on the future of European competitiveness, led by Mario Draghi, sets out a pathway to unlock opportunities and shows where the upside could come from if, of course, political agreement can be reached.